turning uh, tack to the rugby because we're going to look ahead to Italy against Ireland this weekend in the Six Nations and I'm delighted to say that Mike McCarthy is with us on the line this morning. Good morning to you, Mike. Morning, thanks very much for having me. So I think this is the first time we've been speaking to you since you've come back down off Kilimanjaro. Yeah, I know, had a, had a tough trip to Kilimanjaro. I think you spoke to Fez pretty recently. So we, uh, we were doing it in aid of the IRFU Charitable Trust. So that was set up in 1978, uh, raising vital funds for injured players. So, yeah, no, it was a tough, a tough old trip. You know, I was sharing a tent, well, I'd call it a Wendy tent with uh, Stephen Ferris. Uh, first three days was lashing with rain, so all our gear, sleeping bags were soaking wet. We were, we were getting the giggles in the tent thinking, what have we signed up for? So... And then the lads found it pretty funny when I got altitude sickness for pretty bad for two days. But, um, you know, I knew it was a bit strange when we were we were washing ourselves down with wet wipes and Fez was giving me a wipe on my back with a wet wipe. So uh, <laughs> it was tough going, but glad to have done it anyway. Yeah, uh, Stephen Ferris said it was the toughest thing he had ever done. The fact that he was wiping you with wet wipes probably explains why that is. <laughs> yeah, a lasting memory that will stick in my head. Yeah, uh, to be honest, it was tougher than any pre-season I've done, but we had a great group and a great crew, so... Um, you know, look, look back now and uh, absolutely delighted to have done it. Good stuff. Well, congratulations on that, Mike. And it was a native of the RFU Charitable Trust, so a very uh, worthy cause. Uh, we should turn our attention to the game this weekend. It is uh, Italy against Ireland. And we can see in the newspapers today that it looks like Sexton and Conor Murray are going to start. Joe Schmidt is going with the big guns, as we expected. Do we expect a big showing? Do we expect Ireland to get back to some sort of level that they showed us last year? Yeah, I think so. I think it's all about momentum leading into those last two games. You know, I expected Johnny to be starting. He's, uh, you know, while Joey Carberry came on and had an absolutely fantastic game against Scotland, you know, especially when, you know, after that intercept, um, you know, the resilience he showed to come back and put, put in a really good performance and, and steer the ship was great. But, you know, Johnny hasn't played that much rugby, so I think he, he needs some more game time. And, um, you know, I, I fully expected that. You know, I think it's, I don't think there's going to be wholesale changes, but, you know, the likes of Sean Cronin coming in, adding real zip and energy, um, great to see Ian, Ian Henderson, you know, back and available for selection. You know, he didn't get um, a ban for the for the I think the neck roll clear out. So great to have him and Ty Byrne available and Chris Farrell. So uh, we've got some great options, and um, you know, we we beat them at home last year um, pretty convinc pretty convincingly. So um, I expect I expect it to be similar. Obviously, going away, it's going to be a lot tougher. Um, it's a pretty hostile environment. Um, if if Italy start well, it can be it can be pretty tough because they are they are very physical, and um, you know the worry the worry for me the only one concern in the back of my head is you know when your back's against the wall and you, you know they've 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 been losing and um, for Italy is that you know sometimes eventually it gets to a point where it actually galvanises the team um, as we saw in 2013 when uh, I was involved myself um, so you know hopefully. That's not going to happen. I don't think it will happen. And, you know, I just think this island team are going to have w way too much for Italy. Um, but interesting that, you know, after the last game last last year that um, Conor O'Shea met with Joe, um, you know, and, you know, trying to learn from Joe, probably the, arguably the best coach in the world and get, get a real insight into the Irish team. So I'm sure he knows a lot about this Irish side. There's one technical area I wanted to get into with you, Mike, just because it seems to be having a knock-on impact on Ireland's kicking game, and it is slow ruck ball, and it's been something that Ireland have struggled with over the first couple of games. Alan Quinlan was in studio with us after the Scotland game and says perhaps Ireland should resort to the dark arts a little bit more to ensure that that uh, ruck ball gets a little bit quicker so we can get our kicking game up and running a bit smoother. Would you go along with that yourself? Yeah, the the way the way the Ireland team plays is, you know, you have to have quick ruck ball. Um, you know, I don't... The ball, you know, Joe's spoken about that the ball's been a bit slow for them and it's very hard to get any momentum, to get any go forward, um, which we were so used to, you know, uh, before the Six Nations. So I don't think massive changes need to be made. I think, I know Joe will have, you know, showed plenty of clips of the breakdown um, in, in the video sessions. And I think it's more of a mindset thing. Uh, the guys will have worked incredibly hard of it, hard of it this, this week, having, you know, having had a week off with no games. So... Uh, Ty, I think Ty Byrne spoke about it that you know that it, it enabled this Irish squad to be able to focus inwardly, so to look at themselves rather than you know looking at the opposition. So I'm sure the speed of rugby, uh, guys doing their job, doing their role, um, players arriving early to the ball carrier is going to be a massive focus going into that Italy game. Um, and you know if we want to score, if we want to get the five points and score uh, a load of tries. You know it has to be quick, quick at the breakdown.
For sure. Like, how do you change that tide when it's going against you in a game? Is is the only question I'd have. Like, you you can point to the referee, but it certainly seemed, obviously, on the first day at the view of the stadium, that there was just a vicious momentum against us in that area of the pitch. Something that we couldn't reverse. Yeah, I do, you know, I know from being in with that within that Irish squad, um, the guys would not make excuses saying, you know, blaming it on the referee. It's all down to them, and it starts with the ball carrier. It starts with the ball carrier. Um, getting over the gain line, winning those inches, those inches we normally see, the likes of James Ryan running into a brick wall, heavy traffic and, and, and getting that momentum. So it starts with the ball carrier. Uh, really important that the, the ball carrier places the ball with two hands, you know, gets it really far back. And, you know, the arrival of the two guys clearing the ruck, they have to be really early, get rid of any threats that are slowing the ball down. So, um, you know, that certainly will be the focus going into the game. But, um, you know, I think it's been great, um, you know, to have... Well, I don't think it's great, but, you know, you look back to 2015, I think the key learnings were we lost six key players. We lost Paul O'Connell, uh, Sean O'Brien, CJ Stander wasn't qualified. Johnny was missing, uh, Tommy Bowe and Jared Payne. That's six key players. And, you know, that's that's happened this Six Nations as well. And when you look at the strength and depth we've got now, and maybe looking back as an example of where we've come to now is... If you look at the autumn internationals when Sean O'Brien started against Argentina, you would have hoped he would have started the week after against New Zealand. He broke his arm. Um, in com- Dan Levy named to start. He gets injured in Carton House during the week and Josh van der Fleer st- steps in and arguably gets man of the match. So you can really see the depth that we've generated since 2015. And, you know, I think the likes of Quinn Roo starting against Edinburgh last um, the last game. Sorry, not Edinburgh, against Scotland at Murrayfield. Um, you know, I was concerned with Dev missing our only real line-out caller. Quinn had called line out to Connacht before, but, you know, going from calling for your province to play, calling at international level, the pressure and the stress of it, you know, I think the guy, I think the guy's got 100% um, on their line out ball, which is incredible when you're going up against the likes of Johnny, uh, Johnny Gray, who's, you know, certainly knows what he's doing in defense. So for me, that was fantastic. Quinn Rue put in a phenomenal performance, you know, not just with his line out, his tackle count, you know, how do you, how do you, how do you drop him for this week? He, 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 he was incredible. Yeah, like he's quoted in the papers this morning as well, saying that uh, he's open to the idea that he's finally getting the plaudits for his work in an Ireland jersey, which I think has kind of been slow coming at this point. A lot of people were kind of reserving judgments, I think. And I think the Edinburgh game, as you mentioned there, was a real arrival for Quinn Rue when it came to the view of him from an Irish support base. And he said that he's just happy enough to do the dirty work all day long, as long as it allows James Ryan to go and carry the ball, because he does that so well. Yeah, you know, it's 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 similar to, you know, Sean Cronin and, and Rory Bess. You know, Sean Cronin's got more X factor and he's more explosive. But, you know, what Rory does, you know, in the scrum and at the breakdown and, um, you know, his leadership, you know, it's, it was the same with Quinn. He, I think he'd be the first to say, you know, similar to Dev, he's not the most powerful, he's not the most dynamic, but he's a, he's a big unit and his work rate, he's got a massive engine on him. And, I, like, I, honestly, I was so impressed that he... The pressure of having been in camp and having to call the line outs with not that much test experience, it, it, it's incredibly stressful and that's going to be huge for him going forward and especially leading to World Cup if, you know, hopefully Devis will be available. Um, but, you know, we can't just rely on, on Dev um, for, for, for winning line out balls. So that for me was brilliant to see Quinn Rue have such a great game. Yeah, and of course he wasn't in the squad before the Six Nations, uh, or he wasn't in the initial Six Nations squad. And we had you on giving your second row death chart before the first game of the Six Nations. And I think you were the same as most people, really. You had uh, Devin Toner, James Ryan, Ian Henderson, and Ty Byrne as your first four. I, I presume Quinn Rue hasn't played himself into that top four just yet, or is he flirting with that idea at the moment? Yeah, we, I mean, if everyone's fit, you've got a full deck. He, he, mm. You know, he's probably not, but I mean, he's certainly put, he's certainly narrowed the gap. Um, you know, obviously Ty Byrne back this week for available. Ian Henderson, um, yeah, Dev's out, but, um, you know, he's, he's certainly closed the gap. And, you know, to, I'm sure they've had a, a long discussion in selection meeting, um, you know, because it's pretty tough to, to drop a guy who's gone out and performed as well as, they, as, well as he did against Scotland. Yeah, uh, the one selection dilemma that I think we'll all be keeping an eye on is who, who are they going to pick in midfield? And it has been something for the last couple of weeks. Gary Ringrose uh, is out. Who would you be choosing yourself, Mike? Uh, I'd go with Bundy Aki and uh, Robbie Henshaw. You know, uh, Robbie Henshaw, great to, to have him back and, and fit. And, you know, Robbie's shown his resilience in terms of, you know, he's been out. He got that injury last year against Italy where he did, he did dislocated his shoulder, I think. And he was out for a, a, fair, a fair, fairly long time, came back and played in that semi final for Leinster and was absolutely incredible. So he will slot back in. He will play incredibly well. And, you know, that's such a physical partnership, Bundy and Robbie Henshaw. And, Again, we've got so many options there. Um, 
Chris Chris Farrell came in, did a fantastic job uh, against Scotland, as he did against uh, Wales last year. So, you know, the depth since 2015 for me is just incredible. And, you know, like while Evan was massively disappointed with the England game, I think there's nothing more to it really than we got out muscled. England were more physical than us. We, we got out the block slowly. England scored after 90 seconds. You know, that, that's the worst possible start in a home game. And, you know, when you look back at the game, it was actually closer than, than you think um, going into the last 20 minutes. So, um, if anything, New Zealand lost to Ireland at the Aviva in the Autumn Internationals. I'm sure they'll be seeing it, you know, taking the positives from that, that they're not invincible. And, you know, they'll be tight, tightening the ship. And that's exactly what I think, you know, in the long run, it's just a speed bump and it's going to be good for them going forward. Yeah, Richie Murphy was quoted yesterday saying that they may once again go with Robbie Henshaw at some point at full back. Like, if they go with that, it's obviously a, a high level of experimentation. He didn't say they will definitely do it, so I think it's still a big if. Can you see any big experimentation at all when it comes to positional switches or perhaps new faces in this Ireland squad between now and the start of the World Cup, Mike? Uh, not really. Um, only, no, I don't, I don't envisage there being um, too many changes going forward unless someone, you know, Luke, uh, Luke Carty, uh, sorry, Jack Carty's been in, in, in camp. I know he's been on phenomenal form for Connacht. So there's a few guys who are in camp who are who are on the radar and, you know, may get a chance injury permitting. But um, I certainly don't see too many changes. Will, Will Addison, you know, he's, he's pretty close. I know he's injured. Um, but, you know, with a full deck they've got, I, I can only see guys really coming in now if, if, if there's an injury. So, um, you know, Joe's got his, his depth chart of, you know, t- three quality players pretty much in, in every position now uh, leading into the World Cup. And just before we let you go, Mike, you may as well get your take on Wales against England. It's probably going to be uh, the game of the weekend. Uh, Eddie Jones last week describing this as the best Wales team of all time and this England team looking like one of the better versions of modern England as well. It's going to be a cracker of a game. Which way do you see it going? Yeah, I think on the form England showed in that first game against Ireland, if they can turn up with that same physicality um, and, you know, they've got the belief they can go there and win after, you know, two years ago. Um, they're on flying form. Johnny May's on flying form to have, we've seen the difference that Vuna Pola makes and Tua Lange in terms of that physicality and go go forward and dynamism they, those guys bring. They are absolute game changers for that England side. Um but again, going to Wales, it's a hostile environment. Um, I was listening to Danny Kerr on the radio the other day. He was talking about um, the bus going into the Millennium Stadium and a, a Welsh fan running up and headbutting the bus. So kind of that's, that's the scene for how hostile it is. I've, I, I've played there myself. It is, it is very intense. It's a pressure cooker. But, you know, Wales, uh, 11, I think, 11 games, which has e- equaled their, 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 their previous record. But... You know, I don't think Wales have shown uh, great form, to be honest. They, they're amazing that comeback against France and, the, you know, they really had to dig deep to come back. But I, I don't think they've been set in the world alike. They played Italy, made 10 changes, so likely to be another 10 changes coming back into this game. So they may be a bit, little bit unsettled. Um, but, you know, England, uh, you know, as I said, that first game against Ireland and, you know, John Mitchell seems to may, have made a di- massive difference in defence for this England side uh, in terms of, you know, getting off the line, getting in the opposition's faces. So, uh, yeah, I, I think um, I think England will, 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 edge, will edge it against Wales. Good stuff, Mike. Chat to you soon. Thanks very much for having me. Cheers. Nice one.